Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. Today, I'm going to talk about subplot. What is a subplot? Heck, isn't the first plot difficult enough without adding a second? And additional layers of complexities, you might ask? However, in a competitive industry, you need a sophisticated plot, aka structure. And the more of those you implement, within reason of course, it can draw a person and their committed attention into your world. That will be their time and energy thus invested in you. But within the bare bones of subplot for the writer, it's much simpler for you to carry on and hit all the chimes you're looking to hit in your creative material. When something is complex, it can be easy to leave out a few important details here and there, leaving the reader feeling unsatisfied at the end. Not a good idea. Because that is not a good way to build a loyal fan base who will keep coming back for your latest publications. Let's hop to it. Side note. Subplot doesn't necessarily mean one. You can have multiple of those. Example, say your overall story regards romance. I know this is a very popular genre within the women's commercial fiction. But along the course of a woman pining for a man or the other way around, there's a murder scene. The couple are pulled together and become amateur sleuths, adding to the sexual longing and tension, provoking interest and investment from the reader to find out Will they or won't they? Along the way, a beautiful woman, a.k.a. competition, walks into the equation and another murder takes place. Each of these elements are subplots. It basically creates dimension to the story. Think 3D glasses. Understand, because you hear the word sub or, by definition, subordinate, doesn't mean it's any less important to the overall telling of the story. It's like the glue connecting each element to one another and provides the reader and the character an opportunity to become personally acquainted. What I don't mean is just throwing data and details in there to connect two scenes or two or three characters together. They need to correlate. Well, can't I just not do the subplots? Uh, nope. Big, big nope. The pros to subplots. Let me entice you. Yes, it might be more time consuming, but hey, if you're not prepared to invest the time into perfecting something, you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place, regardless of what it is. It won't be worth your time. And writing books? It takes time. Writing books takes a lot of time. Writing good books takes a bit more time. But writing great books takes an incalculable amount of time, effort, dedication and drive. In short, your protagonist has a problem. Every book, therefore, starts with a problem. They will spend the entire length of the creative writing trying to deal, conquer and fix this problem. Subplots can provide various problems that seduce the reader's interest. The end is always the resolve, where the problem is resolved. Happy ending all around. Simple, simple? Mm -hmm. Why bother giving the character personality and dimension in the first place? Isn't it a waste of time? Oh, to that I say, you are in the wrong game. Writing is a craft, one that isn't easy and one that takes years to master. Put it this way. You have a group of friends, but all you know about them is their first name, not even their surname. You have an average idea about their age. They're good looking, but you don't know the first thing about them. Would you want to invest 10 years of friendship in that person? Will you never get through the first threshold? And if you do reach, just say, a decade, and you still only know the first name, 
Mm, you have to know people in order to relate to them, connect to them. In real life, there's a real thing called trauma bonding. We connect and derive empathy and understanding via the sense of being seen from those who are like us, whatever us or whatever that way may be. Characters on a page are no different. Make your story exciting by adding unpredictable concepts, subplots. On average, you'll need to produce a minimum of 80,000 words to call your work a novel. Subplots help to give those each imaginary details, alternatively, color, brightness, spice, and the all-important length. Most first-time writers, and I'm guilty of this for my first book, are underwriters or overwriters. When we hear this for the first time, we can sometimes take this to heart and be displaced within our own craft, second-guessing our own ability. Then we might underwrite from fear of being accused again of being an overwriter. It's, I know, a constant battle. But as in everything in life, we just have to find the perfect balance. And that again takes effort. But this is normal and it takes time to master being neither overwriter or underwriter. But we overwrite out of fear to get it perfect. And then we underwrite either for two reasons. Because we were accused of being an overwriter, we try extra hard to get it perfect next time around. Or just for laziness, you've lost the passion or you never really had the passion. So the only way to master this is, can you guess? To write. Lastly, subplots. Bring life and depth to your overall story and each memorable character. Characters that we can fall in love with. Characters we can aspire to. It makes them relatable and more realistic. The reality also is we all live complicated lives for one reason or another and those reasons may vary from person to person and background to background. But the one thing we have all have in common is we all need escapism. We're not going to relate to anyone who has the easier than us or better than us. Not in real life and certainly not within the realms of fiction. So if you implement real life issues and simpler, perhaps more creative ways of resolving them, otherwise known as funnier ways with a bit of wit thrown in here and there, making it amusing. For example, say you have a horrendous father. He's abusive, aggressive, annoying, cantankerous even, and each time you have a mini problem, he flies off the handle and makes any minor issue apocalyptic. That's a headache, right? You're probably not going to want to read that exact same situation with a similar outcome, as it won't be exactly transport you to your escapism. It misses the point. But if that father in the novel is, as we have thus already described, you enjoy a different outcome, something that isn't likely to really happen within your life. I mean, you can't exactly kill your father off, though this can happen and without consequence in a scene within fiction writing. It's a pick-me-up, in a fictitious way, of course. The overall purpose of a subplot is to inject your story with depth, excitement, and something unexpected. Best advice for subplots. Don't disrespect them. Appreciate them. They're your friends. So you must remember to tie up the gist of its initial purpose in the very end. If you're writing a book series, you could carry this on to the next book. If it's called for, not because you're lazy and you overlooked something, so you're going back to save your hide. Every word, conversation, scene, problem, and resolve must be purposeful and not by accident. 
That's not to say that some great ideas can't be developed by accident, like one idea birthing another idea, and so on and so forth. This is called the writing process, the development stage. That's totally different. Merged complexities within entertainment. It's never a good thing to be exasperated when you're reading in entertainment. Remember, write what you enjoy to write, while all the time expecting the reader to enjoy what you produce. After all, each word, each character, each conversation, each scene, is escapism for you and for the reader. Happy writing, my friends! Until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.